This is our last presentation by Steve Crothers for the year. The Crocodile Dundee of Physics will cover black hole geometry. Looks like some people need to revisit elementary mathematics. Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. Today's topic is the incongruent geometry that underlies the mathematical theory of black holes. Consider a sphere centered at the origin of a Cartesian coordinate system as seen in this figure. If this sphere is moved to some other place in the coordinate system, the center will also move. The geometry of the sphere is not altered by the translation. Now, Black hole mathematics begins with a Euclidean sphere of radius little r centered at the origin. This sphere is then generalized to a non-Euclidean sphere in space-time by means of the radius little r of the Euclidean sphere as in this figure. This produces an equation for radius big r of the non-Euclidean sphere as a function of little r from the original Euclidean sphere. Little r is not the radius of the non-Euclidean sphere, it is not even a distance there. One must calculate the radius of the non-Euclidean sphere. Black hole theory seeks to make the centre of a black hole non-Euclidean sphere correspond to a, the centre of a Euclidean sphere located at the origins of its coordinate system, indicated by the red dashed line. The centre of the non-Euclidean sphere places the finite mass of the black hole in zero volume, infinite density and infinite gravity, of course, in the real world, no finite mass has zero volume, infinite density, and infinite gravity. I object to black holes by this physical fact alone. The black hole non-Euclidean sphere is obtained through complex mathematical manipulations from the foundation Euclidean sphere. Cosmologists unwittingly introduce a latent translation of the Euclidean sphere so that its centre is no longer at the origin of its coordinate system. However, Cosmologists think that the center of the sphere has remained at the origin. If we denote the radius of the Euclidean sphere by rho, the situation is shown in this figure. Cosmologists then incorrectly regard little r, issuing from the origin of coordinates of the space containing the Euclidean sphere and passing through its center, as the radius of the non-Euclidean sphere, and therefore assume that it can go down to zero, causing the centers of the two spheres to correspond. But the radius of the Euclidean sphere is not little r, it is now rho. Furthermore, when little r acquires a certain value, it is known as the Schwarzschild radius of a black hole, given by this equation. This is the distance from the central mass m of the black hole to an event horizon enclosing the mass from which nothing can leave. In effect, black hole theory unwittingly moves the Euclidean sphere away from its origin of coordinates but leaves its centre behind, in violation of elementary geometry. This is precisely how the black hole acquires two singularities, one at the event horizon where rho equals zero, but little r is greater than zero, and one at the black hole mass where little r equals zero. Note in the figure that as the radius rho of the Euclidean sphere approaches zero, little r approaches the value of the so-called Schwarzschild radius. However, the centre of the foundational Euclidean sphere is now located at the tip of the radius little r equal to the Schwarzschild radius. Thus, when rho approaches zero, the Euclidean sphere closes upon its centre, but the black hole has not closed upon its supposed centre. As little r approaches zero, the radius rho of the Euclidean sphere grows, so that when little r equals zero, the radius of the Euclidean sphere has the value of the so-called Schwarzschild radius. Thus, the centre of the Euclidean sphere does not correspond to that of the black hole sphere. When rho is zero, the radius of the non-Euclidean sphere must also be zero. The analytical equivalent of this violation of geometry causes the absolute value of a real number to take on negative values, which is also impossible. This demonstrates that black holes do not exist. If you are interested, the full mathematical details can be found in these papers, linked in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this application of elementary geometry exposing the fatal errors in black hole theory. Do support this channel by leaving a like, subscribing, and sharing this video. 
Comments are always welcome below and we hope to see you soon in another video.